to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video just a reminder some great news the design of experiments for 21st century engineers the mini tab version has just been released. I know for those of you unfortunate enough to have selected Minitab you have a great deal of difficulty in understanding this software so we've created this special version of this text with the Minitab screenshots. The link to lulu.com where you can buy this book is in the description below and of course you also have the option of purchasing Drink Tea and Read the Paper which is the perfect book to go with your Green Belt or Six Sigma Black Belt training. The link to lulu.com for that book is also in the description below. And of course the other thing that we'd really love you to do, please go to buymeacoffee.com and make a small donation. All of these things, the purchase of the books and the donations, they help keep the channel moving. I'm really grateful to all of those people who are currently donating. Many thanks for your support and your help. And now, let's get on with today's video. Welcome to the latest video. And in this video newsletter, what we're going to take a look at is a question from a viewer about measurement system analysis and its destructive destructive MSA okay so sometimes when you're doing some kind of measurement on a product that you've produced of course the test that you do is destructive and of course potentially that destroys the, the methodology of measurement system analysis so let's just talk about MSA first of all just generally and then we'll we'll get stuck into how do you deal with the MSA if it's destructive so of course the way an MSA works we want you to measure a component let's say you're going to measure the diameter of that so we have component number one and in order to be able to see measurement error what we have to do is of course measure this twice or multiple times so normally measurement system A is going to measure our part twice so we get two results then measurement system B is going to measure the same part twice so we get two results and of course when we look across the row all of those results should be equal if you've measured the same part you should get the same result in theory now of course there's two types of error now we're going to just clarify something before we talk about the destructive test there's two types of error if these two are wrong this is within system obviously if these two are wrong this is also within system But if the average of A and the average of B are wrong or different, that is between system. Now this is what I want to clarify. People sometimes send me messages and they say, uh, is, that, is that machine or operator error? No, it's system error. You cannot you cannot discriminate between where the error is coming from. You can only discriminate within and between. A measurement system, remember, is made up of the machine, the piece of equipment. And don't forget, we're not evaluating this. This isn't the machine. We are evaluating the whole system that you've created in order to understand your process. So the system is made up of the machine, the person, the method they are using, 
the environment they work in and the parts, the component and all of those together is a measurement system. So when we talk about error and we see the error in the MSA, that's the system and we can only assess it as within or between. We have no way of saying, well, the machine is causing it, the person is causing it, the method is causing it, etc. Um, you know, if the component, for instance, isn't round, if it's oval, of course the component starts to cause measurement error. But the, the method that you're using will create measurement error for that. The machine that you've chosen to use will create error. So the error that comes from measuring that is created by this and this and this and this you cannot discriminate you can't pull those apart and then you can only come up with better usually better methods to be honest to measure things like that you could also make sure you don't machine it uh, oval in the first place but that's a different that's a different problem but it's between system and within system we can't apportion the variability to a person or apportion the variability to a machine that isn't what we're doing. We are going within and between, and then we try and get the best system we can to repeat the measurements. Now, obviously that relies on the piece not being destroyed in the four tests. Now, when do you tend to do destructive tests? Well, this is often when, you know, people sometimes are producing material. Maybe they're producing material on a, on a roll like this. So, they're producing a roll and this thing might be might be 50 meters long and then what they do when they produce the thing there's a tail on the end and they might cut samples out of the piece in order to discover some uh, feature some performance feature of the material that they've created and often these tests are destructive in nature so maybe you do um, an inflammability test, um, which of course sets the piece on fire. So the piece now is no longer available to do the second test, the third test, and the fourth test. So the question is, what do you do? Okay, what you've got to do is to take four pieces that are as similar to one another as they can possibly be. Now this is a difficult thing to do, and I know people go, ooh, this doesn't sound um, particularly good. No, this is difficult. So what you would do here is you would take your four pieces right next to one another like that. And because they're right next to one another, we are going to assume that the piece-to-piece -piece variability is relatively small. Now people say to me, yeah, but when I get a problem now, it could be piece to piece variability. It could be, absolutely. We're back down here again, aren't we? That's still part of your problem. It's still part of your measurement system. Because think about it like this. Let's say you're doing an inflammability test. Let's say you're gonna measure how many seconds does the material last before it, it combusts, before it bursts into flames, let's say. And we measure it in seconds. Okay, so let's say that if I took this piece, it would have lasted 52 seconds. If I pick that piece, it would have lasted 56 seconds. If I took this piece, it would have lasted 48. And if I took this piece, it would have lasted 66. Now, people don't want to think that that is part of your measurement system. That problem is part of your measurement system because they're, they're constantly thinking about this. They're, they're constantly thinking about the equipment. Think of it as a system. It is a system to understand your manufacturing. And what we're looking at here is our sampling system. That is part of the test because, of course, by luck, 
you might have got this result and failed this roll of material. By luck, you might have got that material and passed this roll of material. That is part of your measurement system. It's part of the problem. So even if you get this and you get lots of variability, you know, within and between in the way we described, you've got to start doing tests on the material that you're making to try and understand how much variability you've got because that's really important. It's part of your problem. If you're making material like this with lots of variability in it, that's going to show up because of your sampling method. Now, one of the ways to get around this, and this is a method that they give you to improve your measurement system generally, is to take the piece. So let's say I've got a bad measurement system for measuring the diameter of this. What's a quick way of making the variability less? Well, I measure it five times and I take the average. I measure it five times and I take the average. So what can you do here? If you want to lose some of this within material variability, you can measure it multiple times and take the average. Okay, so that will then start to get you to home in on the real measurement of the product that you make. Now, people are going to say, this is hard to understand, this is difficult to do. Yeah, of course it's difficult to do. You're making materials for people that people can't make at home. You've got a big piece of machinery doing something fancy to a piece of raw material. Just manufacturing your product isn't easy, and probably your factory costs you £25 million to build. This is part of sorting the problem out. So... You can take multiple samples and take an average. That will calm your measurement system down and it will focus you more on the variability coming from the material and less from the measurement system. But this sampling problem in rolls of material is very common. And people think, yes, but that isn't my measurement system. It is. Your sampling system is part of that technique and you have to think about it as a whole series of events in order for you to know how this manufacturing process is performing so that's as good of advice as i can give you i appreciate destructive testing taking pieces next to one another is never something that people feel comfortable about i never feel comfortable about it either um, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a task that's going to take a lot of work. You've got to put a lot of work into, into understanding what your process is doing, understanding what your measurement system is doing. It's a lot harder to do than the non-destructive test. But if you really want to be successful and make more money, go do the test, go understand what's going on. And then once you get your measurement system right, you make bucket, bucket loads of cash. Hope that helps. Thanks very much. Thank <laughs> you.